So here is a situation where, um, again, when we are doing, making the measurement uh, on an oscilloscope for in, uh, of the output of a function generator, uh, what we have here is a situation where the function generator is saying I am putting out 2.5 volts peak to peak. Uh, but when you look at the oscilloscope, the oscilloscope sees 5.07 volts peak to peak. So what's going on here? Uh, why is there a difference? Now here, the, the difference is a gain of two. Uh, if you have a gain of two difference between what you expect and what you are measuring, what you're actually reading on the oscilloscope, uh, that's a clue. And basically, uh, what is going on here is the, uh, there is a mismatch in output impedances. Uh, on the output impedance of the function generator and the input impedance uh, of the, um, of the, uh, of the uh, oscilloscope. So uh, here, here, here's, what's, here's what's actually happening. If I, um, and I'm going to try and move this around a little bit so you can see it just a little bit more. So um, if, I, uh, if I hit the utility button here and then channel one, you can see that the, uh, this soft button has the value of the load that we have told the uh, function generator that it is hooked to. We've told the function generator that it is hooked to a 50 ohm load. Well, the function generator has a 50 ohm output impedance. And so this, uh, is, this little circuit here is showing a resistance uh, here and a resistance over here labeled Z. Well, the horizontal resistance is the, that 50 ohm output impedance of the function generator that does not change. The load Z is, uh, can change, but right now we're telling it that it's 50 ohms. If that's the case, then what, what do you have? Well, you've got, as it shows here, it shows 50 ohms inside the function generator and then 50 ohms on the load. Half of the output voltage of the function generator is dropped across the internal 50 ohm resistance of the function generator and the other half is dropped across the load. Well, the only problem is that the load in this case is not 50 ohms. Uh, we have told the function generator that the load is 50 ohms, but in fact it's not. It's the oscilloscope that has a one mega ohm in input impedance, not 50 ohms, and therefore we have a problem. So. Uh, because the function generator knows that half of its voltage is going to be lost across the input resistance of the function generator, it's going to, when it says it's going to make 2.5 volts, internally it's going to make 5 volts, it's knowing that half of it will be dropped across the internal resistance of the function generator, and supposedly only 2.5 volts uh, makes it out. But, in fact, since we don't have a 50 ohm load, and so we're contradicting what we've told the function generator, we have a one mega ohm load, almost all of the voltage that the input, that the uh, function generator is making, the five volts, is, gets, uh, gets out through the voltage divider law, because you've got 50 ohms on the, in, on the input here, on this series resistor, and you've got one mega ohm here, and so you know that the voltage divider law says that the output voltage will be the input voltage, which is five volts, times, in this case, one meg over one meg plus 50 ohms. And that is essentially five volts. So that explains why we have the function generator display saying I'm making 2.5 and the oscilloscope saying I'm getting 5.07. It's the factor of two problem. So when you see that factor of two, one of the first things you think about is what is the scope uh, thinking the load is. And the way you get there is you hit the utility uh, button 
and then channel one, and it will tell you that it's expecting a load of 50 ohms. You can change that by just hitting the load and saying it's expecting high Z. Now then, when you go back to the sine function, it's saying I'm going to make 5 volts peak to peak, and I'm reading 5.07 volts peak to peak over here. And so that's how you fix the problem. So thank you for watching.